स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good morning. Welcome to the lecture eight of this ongoing course on orthographic uh, projections or architectural graphics. So, uh, in this particular lecture, we're going to learn about scales. Now, what is a scale, uh, and why is it so important for drawings? So, scale is basically required to literally scale up or down a particular drawing. and draw it on a given size of sheet so for example as i had said earlier also if you have to draw the drawing of this huge room so how would you fit the drawing of a room on a small sheet you could draw on a very small piece of paper an a4 size sheet an a3 size sheet or maybe an a1 or an a0 size sheet it could be any sheet now how would you draw that and all the drawings drawn on different sheets however big or small they may be should be able to represent the same dimensions which we want them to read so for example this hall where i am standing currently is approximately say 5 meters by 15 meters now 5 meter by 15 meter in a true scale is not possible to be drawn on a sheet nor is it required so if i will draw it in such a manner that every centimeter 1 centimeter is equal to 1 meter so what does it mean 1 centimeter is equal to 100 centimeters 1 is 200 so that is a scale on which if i draw this room which was 5 meter by 15 meter would be drawn as 5 centimeter by 15 centimeter very simple this is a type of scale which we use to draw a bigger object a bigger uh, you know thing on a smaller sheet of paper it could be the other way around for example i am drawing an engineering machinery part which is a very small tiny part and i want to make it in such a manner that i am able to show the very fine details so maybe that it's a very small screw which goes into a machine and it is just 1 cm by say uh, 0.5 cm of a of a screw and then there are all those uh, wiring on that there is a detail on the end and on the top and there are a lot of these things so what i'll do i'll draw that 1 cm of that screw at a uh, at an enlarged a bigger scale and i will see this 1 cm being represented as 10 cm so that i can show all these details on it there the scale is 10 is to 1 so 10 cm of an object represented on the sheet is actually equivalent to 1 cm of the real object that is also a scale so we could scale up we could scale down or we could also draw on a true scale for example the uh, section of a door frame so it could be exactly the same size and will be drawn at the same scale in the drawing that is a true scale so the first thing that we need to learn about this is what are the different types of scales reducing scales as i said are used when the object is much bigger for example somebody is designing a bridge now that is a huge bridge we cannot possibly draw it on the sheet of paper so we will have to reduce its scale so the these are called reducing scales where the real object is much bigger than what is shown in the drawing so any scale where we have 1 is to 50 1 is to 100 there could be any scale for that matter 1 is to 200 1 is to 250 1 is to 500 all these scales where one unit represents a larger bigger number unit that is a reducing scale 
So, here the real object will be much bigger than what will be represented on the sheet. Now, the other one the second one where the object is the real object is much smaller and what is shown on the sheet is much bigger version of it that is called an enlarging scale. In this you will write say 10 is to 1. So, 10 units represented on the sheet are actually representing just one unit of the real object 10 is to 1, 50 is to 1, 25 is to 1 it could be any depending upon now how do you decide that what is the scale to be followed usually there are some standard scales. So, the ones that I have written are usually the common ones used they are the standard ones, but you you, you choose a scale depending upon the size of the drawing to be represented size of the object to be represented. For example, you have a huge site. So, for example, there is a city plan being drawn. Now, you also need to put it on a scale it has to be proportionate, but then it has to be reduced. Now, how would that be reduced? So, depending upon the size of the sheet on which it has to be printed. So, for example, the city plan you know sometimes if you go to cities you find transportation plans where the road network would be shown or maybe the broad districts are shown or something like that. So, depending upon the sheet of paper it could be an A4 sheet which is a handout, it could be a bigger sheet or sometimes it is even bigger, bigger than A0s. So, maybe 4 A0s together put up one city plan. So, depending upon that the scale could be very odd 1 is to uh, 5750 just to fit that entire drawing onto this sheet that that entire city plan onto this sheet. So, depending upon the size of the sheet these scales could also vary you could choose some scales which are not standard ones which are not commonly used, but still they will serve the purpose and that is desired at that moment. So, these scales are chosen depending upon the real size of the object and the sheet on which they have to be represented. The last one which is full sized scale is 1 is to 1. So, when the real size of the object is drawn on the sheet it is called a full size scale 1 is to 1. So, if it is like 10 centimeters uh, big object it will be drawn exactly as a 10 centimeters on the sheet that is what the full size scale is. Now, these different types of scales could be represented on sheet in multiple various ways that is what we are going to learn in this lecture. So, whenever you are drawing writing mentioning the scale or drawing a scale is mandatory we have to draw the scale and it could be done in multiple ways. The first one which is very simple and which is often used it is called the engineer's scale. And how do we do that? Just as I had done in the previous slide. So, what do we do? We just do 1, we just write 1 is to 100 that is the scale. So, it implies that 1 unit is equal to 100 units. I do not write what unit is it depending upon what unit are you going to use it will be. So, 1 centimeter is equal to 100 centimeter, 1 meter is equal to 100 meter anything. So, any unit you pick up here will be equal to 100 units of the same object in reality. So, it means that a 100 meter long road will be represented as a 1 meter long road here 1 is 200 is not that uh, you know reduced a scale. If you really if you look at the map of India sometime you could actually be seeing it at 1 is to 50,000 1 is to 5 lakh depending upon at what. So, whenever you see the map of India whether it is you might have definitely used the map of India for your geography classes in school. So, so the small sized map is also very proportionate you look at it and you say this is the map of my country 
Why? Because it is proportionate. It's just that it is scaled down. It has been reduced by using a reducing scale. So, the scale there, the number will be much bigger. So, 1 is to say 1 lakh, 1 is to 5 lakh. They don't mention it is just proportionate. But if you really look at that, there must be a scale. Now, the purpose there is not to actually measure the dimension. It is just to know relatively that, okay, where this river is or where that city is. So, you tentatively draw that. But if we are to measure the distances, so in all the geographical maps, whatever you find, wherever, you will always find a scale in the bottom somewhere. Now, it could be written represented as an engineer scale which is just simply written as a number or the second one is graphical scale. Now this is something that we usually use. Now graphical scale is where where you draw that this particular unit, this unit it could be 1 centimeter, 1 inch this unit is equal to how many units so that is what we would we would write so if it is zero maybe there are say four so if we write it like that we would write this is four meters okay so instead of reading it as how many units actually drawn here are equivalent to 4 meters, we just draw it that this is equal to 4 meters. Now, what is this and how will we read it? So, to read it, we will just measure, we will take a divider, we will just measure how much is this and measure the same thing on the actual, on the drawing that is represented on the sheet. So, you measure that drawing and you put it on the scale and you will know that how many units are being represented here. That is what this graphical scale does. Now, why at all do we need a graphical scale? Why couldn't we just do with a with engineer scale? We could just write and most often by the way we write especially because we are now drawing making the drawings on computers. So, what happens that digitally you anyways have that drawing which you draw in full size scale and then while printing you just reduce or enlarge it and it could be reproduced very easily but it was not the same in the old time. So, how were the drawings being made? They were being made by hand. We were drawing it by hand. So, when you were drawing it by hand and then the paper would shrink. Sometimes they were on the piece of cloth. So, it would shrink the um, during the winters and then sometimes it would expand. So, instead of just writing now if suppose we had written that okay this country's map is drawn at the scale of 1 is to 50,000 and then somebody just went on to measure that okay how much is the uh, overall area of this country he or she would get a different result every time because the actual thing the actual dimension which we were measuring on the sheet would vary in different seasons over the years and all that. So, to avoid that they would draw a graphical scale like this on the same sheet of paper. So, if the paper would shrink this entire scale would shrink simultaneously along. So, whatever this distance is of course initially there would be a proper scale which would have been used but whatever this unit is would remain the same and it would still mean 1 meter. So, the paper has shrunk this unit this particular distance has also shrunk simultaneously and that is how the graphical scales are actually used to look at it to measure it by using a tool and then read the dimension that is what the intent of using a graphical scale is. Now, when we are whether we are using an engineer scale or a graphical scale, but more for graphical scale one thing which we need to know is RF or representative fraction. So, it is called representative fraction and we very commonly use this term as rf. Now, what is rf? rf is equal to 
the length of the drawing upon the actual length of the object. So, if I say that the length of the drawing is 1 centimeter and the actual length of the drawing is say uh, 10 meters. So, that is 1000 centimeters same units we have to keep. So, the representative fraction is 1 is 2000 which is how we represent this scale. So, this is the way of representing this RF this rep representative fraction. So, this engineered scale is a way of representing this RF representative fraction which is say 1 is 200 here and the RF here would be defined it would be determined and it would just be represented as a graphical scale here. So, that is what the purpose is. Now, what we are going to learn about is how to draw the graphical scales. There are various different types of graphical scales which are used. We are going to learn about two scales here. I am showing it to you here on screen and after that we would quickly look at how to draw them. So, this is a plane scale. The first one is a plane scale and what we do here is that we would simply draw a a simple scale a straight scale we would divide it into some equal uh, number of units sufficient enough to measure the maximum dimension on this drawing whatever drawing is given. So, that is what we would use. So, this is say RF 1 is to 4 this is in decimeters and here we, we measure centimeters. So, the last unit so the 0 as you might have uh, realized observed in the previous slide also we always start 0 at 1 unit from the left hand corner and then have equal number. So, these are all equal. So, these are equal equally spaced lines. So, say 4 units this side and 1 unit this side instead of writing 1 here we have written 10 which is the 10th division of this bigger unit it could also be 100 it could be so depending upon suppose if it was meter and we were representing centimeters here. So, then we would have this would have been 100 here. So, while it is 1 meter here this is actually 100 centimeters here and instead of 0 we would have had uh, sorry 5 we would have had 50 and what we would do we would divide this last one into equal number of divisions depending upon what is the scale. Suppose we are uh, using inches and fit. So, in that case we would have divided it into 8 equal parts, but since mostly we are using the metric system and I am also demonstrating this entire process for metric system, we would most often divide it into 10 equal parts and each part is equal to one tenth of the unit being represented here. So, if it is meters here this this one is equal to 10 centimeters. If it was decimeters we would have measured 1 centimeter here at whatever scale we would have drawn. So, that is what this simple plane scale is it is easy to draw the only thing that we have to do is divide this one unit representation into 10 equal parts. We have already seen how to divide any given line into equal number of parts. So, that is simple that is very easy we can simply do it. So, that is what the plane scale is and we always mention the reference uh, representative fraction. The second one is a diagonal scale. Now, in this one if you had to measure I would say suppose we are considering meters and centimeters here if I say that we have to measure 1.5 meters it was easy we would measure 1 here and 0.5 here and so this this distance would be equal to 1.5 meters here 1.5 1.1 2 3 4 like that. Now, what if I say that I have to measure 1.37 meters how do we do that it is not possible. So, to take it to the second decimal we would use this diagonal scale it is much easier. So, what we do here is for the first line 0 to say uh, 
So, this is a 10 centimeter line or 10 units line and it represents 100 meters right. So, uh, each one may represents 100 uh, meters 100 units in the last one what we do we further divide it into 10 parts as we have done for the plane scale. But in addition to that we also raise a scale vertically ok. So, we raise the scale vertically we divide it into 10 equal parts and then we join the first fraction here to the first fraction here. Now, as this triangle goes on increasing we can see that the horizontal distance here is one tenth of this, this unit. So, suppose uh, just like in the previous example if we would we were counting meters here and we are taking say centimeters here we can then go to the second decimal place we can now measure 1.37. So, how do we do that say 1 here 3 units 3 units here. So, this is 1 to 3 units and I move it up to say 7. So, this point is 3 7 this is what this distance uh, is. So, here as it has shown 653 meters. So, this is 650 and then we take it to the third one. So, this has already increased from here at as 6.50 to or 650 to 653 at this point that is what this diagonal scale enables us to do. So, we can actually measure it up to the second uh, decimal place or we can actually measure it like this. This is what diagonal scale enables us to do. So, in any uh, drawing in reality we always do not get the simple fractions that ok it will be 650 it does not jump like that. It could be 653, 657, 651 whatever it could be anything and that is what is measured using this diagonal scale. So, let us now move on to the sheet and we will see how to draw both these scales both the plane scale and the diagonal scale and every time you draw your sheets you have to mention both an engineer scale as well as using graphic scale depending upon what kind of scale do you require. If it is a simple drawing you can do with plane scale you can go ahead with that if not you have to draw the diagonal scale. So, let us shift to this sheet and see how to draw these scales. So, now we are drawing the scales both types of graphic scales not the engineer scale of course. So, we are drawing the scale onto the sheet let us see how do we do that. So, suppose I am drawing a 1 is 2. So, I am drawing say a 1 is 2. 500 a scale to represent this RF of 1 is to 500. Now, if I have to draw a scale big enough to measure say 50, uh, 50 centimeter. So, so 1 is to 1 upon 500 into 50 that will give me 0 0.1 meter this is meters here. So, it means that I have to draw a scale up of 10 centimeter if I have to measure a maximum dimension of 50 meters on an RF of 1 is to 500 I will have to draw a line of a scale of 10 centimeters that is what we are going to do right now. So, 10 centimeters. So, here we measure 10 centimeters. Now, this one we will divide in 10 equal parts. So, I have already divided this line into 10 equal parts, but the very first division we will have to divide into 10 equal parts. So, to make those 10 divisions I again draw a line at an acute angle and I am again taking here a 10 centimeter line it could be anything, but just for the convenience so that I could mark it here. I have drawn another line acute line here with 10 divisions on it and now 
I will connect it. So, now the first unit has to be divided, the first division has to be divided into 10 equal parts using the same division of line rule. So, what I have done, I have drawn an acute line at an a line at an acute angle from this given line and then I have drawn 10 marks, 10 equal divisions on that and now I am connecting the last of the mark with this with this point and we will just draw parallel lines from these points coming on to this division, the first division. Now, if you see here, we have already achieved the 10 divisions onto this of this first division, each one measuring equal to 1 mm or 1 tenth of the centimeter. But what we were taking here is that this is a scale, the reference, the representative fraction is 1 is to 500 here and we are representing a line of 50 meters here. So, when we are writing, when we draw So, 1 centimeter here is equal to 5 meters that is what we are representing and and if we start to draw like this and this one becomes a 0, this is the division. So, what we have here is 0 and then we can start writing 5, 10, 15 because each unit is 5 meters so this line is this is equal to 45 meters here and on this side this is 5 meters or we could also write 500 centimeters. So, we could also write 500 centimeter here and this side it is meters. This is a scale and then for each division we could also mark these lines or we could just mark the, the middle one which is 250 centimeters or we could also write the divisions in between depending upon what is the common unit the dimension to be measured. This is a plane scale representing an RF of 1 is to 500 that is what this particular plane scale represents. Now, the next one is a diagonal scale. So, with, with the help of this one you can actually measure a distance or uh, a dimension which is the minimum unit of that the minimum uh, fraction that we can measure from that is one tenth of 500 centimeters that is 50 centimeter. So, we can measure say 5.5 we can measure 2.5 because each fraction of this first division measures equal to 50 centimeter or 0 0.5 meters. We cannot measure anything lesser than this 0 0.5 meters or 50 centimeters. Now, if we want to measure a dimension of say 267 centimeters, okay. So, which means we want to measure we want to measure 2.67 meters right or we could also make it bigger because here we can measure all the way up to 45 meters. So, we could measure 25 meters here 25.53 meters. So, suppose we want to measure 
26.7 meters say then how do we measure so we will draw a diagonal scale to measure this 26.7 So, while drawing and say the representative fraction now is different. Suppose let us let us take this R f to be of 1 is to 200 and we are going to be measuring 26.7 meters the maximum that we want to measure is 50 meters. So, for a given R f of 1 is to 200 how much do we need to draw is 1 is to 200 into 50. So, this is 1 by 4 meters that means 25 centimeters 0 0.25 meters 25 centimeter. So, for a given RF of 1 is to 200 where we want to measure 50 meters we will be drawing a line of 25 centimeters. So, let us draw this diagonal scale here. So, we have taken 25 centimeters and we want to divide. So, what we uh, we want to take again is we want to measure up to 50 and uh, we can divide it into 10 equal parts where if we divide it into 10 equal parts each part will be measuring 2.5 uh, 2.5 centimeters and that will be equivalent to 5 meters. So, let us do that. So, we make these equal divisions of 2.5 centimeter each and now what we have to do is we could have drawn it using the division of line method, but since it is a simple uh, unit and we could have divided using a scale that is what I have done. And now what we have to do is we have to divide this first uh, division into 10 equal parts and we will do it using the same method as we use. So, I am again dividing this line into 10 equal parts. And we will have these 10 divisions equal divisions by drawing the parallel lines. So, we now have these 10 divisions in the first fraction on the onto this uh, diagonal scale. Now, what we are required to do after this is we have to draw further 10 divisions. Now, it could be 
any size of the line there it does not need to be 1 centimeter each or whatever, but just for ease we may take it to be a simple division. So, I am taking 0.5 centimeter here. and we will again draw parallel lines again you draw vertical parallel lines at each of this fraction. So, what we have here is this is 0, this is 0 and each 2.5 centimeter division is equivalent to 5 meters. So, we write it here 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 and 45 this is meters and RF here is 1 is to 200 that is what we are drawing. Now, this side we have again 5 meters, but we will represent it as 500 centimeters here right. And now let us again take these, these 10 divisions in very light lines vertically up. So, we have again taken these 10 equal parts up and what we are going to do here is we are going to join the first part here with the top first line that is how we draw and we fix up this angle and then we draw these 10 equal parts. That is what the diagonal scale is. So, what we now have to measure is say 26.7 meters right. So, we have 25 meters here. So, just look at it carefully. 25 meters here. Now, what we have to do or we could take 20 right. This is 500 centimeters what we have to do. So, each division this is 10 divisions here. This is 50 250. Now, if I divide this is 50 each. So, if I take this is 50 centimeters right. So, it is 0.5 meters I am here at 20, 25 meters 25.5 right 25.5 26 26.5. Now, I have to measure a 0.2 here. So, I take it at here this is 26.7. So, that is how we will measure. So, simply we will just measure the distance here from here and that is what we are going to get. 
this is how we are going to measure any given distance but then it depends upon how we draw this scale this is for an rf of 1 is to 200 and this scale is capable of measuring up to 50 meters so this is how we are going to draw a diagonal scale for any given rf and to measure a given distance I hope you are able to understand the concept of scales and how we draw these scales on sheet and why we draw it. From the next lecture onwards, we will start to understand the different basic shapes that are going to be used solids as well as two dimensional shapes that are going to be used in our graphics course. So, thank you for being with me here today. Let us see you in the lecture 9 tomorrow. Thank you.